a lot of people say, I want to fly private. Most people limit themselves with, which is I can't afford private. And when I fly private with you and I fly private, it's an investment, it's not an expense. Mm -hmm. And I'm creative enough to find six different ways to make 10 to 20 times the money by flying private. One person will always end up in the more than enough and one will always end up with nothing. If all you're worried about is keeping what you have and you're not focused in on having more or adding value to more, you're gonna end up with nothing. That's why I fly private. A lot of people say, I want to fly private. I want to, I want to do this, I want to do that. I want to live a higher lifestyle. They're right on the cusp. Um, and they actually, most of them could if they really wanted to, but they still have a scarcity mindset. So there's so many people that are just like, they've achieved a really good place and they're so scared of losing it that they stop taking risk and they still crave it. They still crave that growth and feel like they could be high, higher achievers, but they've hit a level of success and now they're scared to lose it. So from your point of view, because I know you've you've climbed I've high, you've it. fallen, you've come back, and there's that saying, you're not a millionaire until you've lost it and remade it, right? So I wanted to ask you specifically this question for those people that still crave growth but are scared to lose how much they've earned so far. What would what advice would you give them? Shift your paradigm of understanding abundance. And what I mean by that is that I can appreciate having a lot but I also can appreciate losing a lot and why people lose a lot. It's because of fear. And so if we focus in on what we don't want, what's missing or what we don't have or what other people think, we're going to get more of that. And we actually are living in a zero sum game when we are afraid of losing what we have. And what happens in a zero sum game of trade and negotiation is eventually if all you're worried about is keeping what you have, and you're not focused in on having more or adding value to more, you're gonna end up with nothing. It may take a lot longer than it did for me mm -hmm. to have nothing, but eventually applied mathematics will tell you that if you live in a zero sum game, if you live in fear where you wanna hold on to what you have, eventually you'll have nothing. And if you don't have nothing, I promise you your kids, or I guarantee you your grandkids will have nothing. Mm -hmm. But when you live in abundance and shift the paradigm of saying, I not only appreciate what I have, not only do I acknowledge it by giving away, spending it, having it stolen, manipulated, and cheated from me, but I have faith, there's more than enough of everything for everyone, that I live in a value-add world. And that if by chance I make some decisions that are not aligned with keeping what I have today, that that is actually setting me up for promoting me and protecting me to make more in the future. And it's just a temporary status. That's why the average millionaire in America has gone bankrupt twice because they live in a value add world. Mm -hmm. And so your choice is, do I want to live in a world of more than enough of everything for everyone and live to the fullest potential that I have and experience things like flying private and risk losing everything in the short term just to gain back more? Or do I want to not experience life, hold on to what I already have and allow it to dissipate, dissolve and disappear eventually, which it's going to do. One person will always end up in the more than enough and one will always end up with nothing. And it's not the person you think about. It's mm -hmm. not the person who's holding on to what they have living in scarcity. The people who have more than enough live in a world of more than enough. And they understand that they have to not only appreciate, acknowledge, but ask for more. And as long as they're learning from the experience of acknowledgement, of giving away, losing it, manipulated, cheated from you, whatever, that in the long run, whether you believe this is your only life or you are aligned with me, infinite lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to live in a value add world, expanding, growing, accelerating, exponentially receiving outcomes, or do you want to dissipate, dissolve and disappear? That's what scarcity is. And I think you have to shift the paradigm and have faith that yes, it may happen. My bank account may go down several million dollars, but that just means it's going to go up twice as much. And when you have that attitude, you are not limiting yourself by the two things in life that limit us. Number one, you are only limited by your self-image. You will never overachieve your own self-image. That's, that, that's why I fly private. Also, 
you will never overachieve the meaning you give your past. So you're looking at someone that went bankrupt, lost over a hundred million dollars, and will tell you 15 years later that the meaning I give it is protection and promotion, that I have more money, help more people, and have more fun than I ever have because I experienced and learned the lessons from living in abundance, from living in scarcity. And that paradigm shift has allowed me to mitigate my risk of losing everything in the future, but it has not limited me or my self-image or the meaning I give my bankruptcy. Most people give a bankruptcy the meaning of punishment, mm -hmm. of scarcity. Mm -hmm. I have given it protection, promotion, and abundance like so many others that have gone bankrupt, and that's why I'm where I am today. That's why my office, my studio, my training center is a $5.2 billion office that has a billion dollar screen. I love it. I, I feel like I, I owe you now for all. It's been a great session. You've given us <laughs> so many lessons. I have one more question. Perfect. Say you can sell anything. Sell me a private jet charter. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> so I always start off. Number one lesson in selling a private jet charter is make sure you're talking to an open mind. Mm -hmm. Also remind yourself that everyone has an open mind. And especially when it comes to people who are better avatars for private jets, then we want to know that just because someone has a closed mind most of the time doesn't mean they have an open mind all of the a closed mind all of the time and it's easier to sell someone that has a closed mind the majority of the time if you catch them when they have an open mind because they don't have many options what makes you and i hard to sell is we have too many options because we have open minds most of the time. Mm -hmm. So number one lesson is selling a private jet is before you start trying to sell that jet make sure you find an open mind. Once we find an open mind, it's really easy because the next component is, hey, have you ever flown private? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Why do I ask that? Because there's only two ways to provide value to people. Everyone makes this so complex. The way that we provide value to people is to give them more of what they like or take away what they don't like. And then it's our job and able to, which makes it easy in the private jet world to me, is articulate the quantitative value of what they like and what you don't like by asking questions. Hey, would it help you if I put together a jet that would save you six hours to get back to your daughter's graduation? Would it help you if I brought four other friends along that would split the cost with you? Would it help you if I gave you a dry lease that would allow you to do this? Would it help you if we coordinated it with other meetings in order to effectuate being able to do what used to take a month in four days. Would it help you if? And then, even more important, relative to the relationship capital and community of the like frequency in a neighborhood, which is, I'm in the private jet neighborhood, is, hey, do you know anyone that can help me? Mm -hmm. I'm looking for more of your friends, Dave. I know you know Austin Eckler and John Teffer, and I know you have these guys who make billions of dollars. Do they fly private? What do they like? What don't they like? Would it help you if? And this whole value add world that we live in, that we discuss throughout the interview, just elevates itself. Solar and private jets are two of the easiest things for me uh, to sell because one, I have a credible partner in Stella Jets. Two, it's easy to get to the emotional attachment. People buy on emotion for logical reasons. Mm -hmm. And I'm really good at articulating the quantitative value of logically why we should fly private and when we should pri fly private because I've lived it. Mm -hmm. And I've made a fortune from flying private in a variety of different ways, including experiential ways. Mm -hmm. And all of these things aggregate, accelerate, and compound exponentially into providing what most people limit themselves with, which is I can't afford private. Are you going to limit yourself by your self-image? No. Why don't we work through the fact of what you like, don't like, let me help you get over even the emotional aspect, but get into the quantitative analysis of time, relationship capital, and experience in order to effectuate a value justified business case, a quantifiable value, a simple equation of, hey, Mr. Meltzer, if I give you $20, will you give me $100 back? That's what I look for. And when I fly private with you and I fly private, it's an investment, it's not an expense. Mm. And I'm creative enough to find six different ways to make 10 to 20 times the money by flying private. And if I can't, then I'm gonna go Southwest. I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. But I can find a lot of opportunities, as you know, 
to fly private and everyone's like, oh my God, Mr. Big Time. No, I'm making more money than you by investing in private uh, aviation. How can they reach you? Uh, email me and anyone in the community. I give my books for free. I pay for the book, pay for shipping. I sign them. Email me either way about private or my book, david at dmeltzer.com. Email me directly. I do have a time system. I answer them all myself, david at dmeltzer.com.